Are your business KPIs lying to you? Today, we're going to talk about the problem with summary metrics. Welcome to Data Smarties, the show where we get smart with data and Smarties. In business, we use summary metrics all the time. A summary metric is just another way of saying that you've taken a series of data and summarized it into a single data point, like a total or an average. And we do this so often that we don't even really notice that we're summarizing. Most of the time when we report on business KPIs like revenue or customer satisfaction or lifetime value or acquisition cost, we're doing so in the form of a summary metric. But are these metrics telling us everything we need to know? Let's open up our tube of Smarties and find out. First, to illustrate the point with maths and Smarties, I've mapped four different data sets with an X and Y value. Now, you can tell just by looking that these are very different data sets. Here, we have a dispersed data set, which sort of trends from the bottom left to the top right. Here, we have a data set that's more tightly correlated. However, it does curve. It curves upwards and then back down again. And here we have two more data sets, each with a very clear outlier. If you were to summarize this data, there's loads of ways you could do it. You can find the average or the mean of both the x-axis and the y-axis. You could also find the standard deviation of those figures. Or you might calculate the correlation between the two axes, as well as the linear regression, otherwise known as the line of best fit. However, when we do that for these data sets, we notice something very surprising. The average of x is the same. The standard deviation of x, it's the same. The average of y, it's the same. The standard deviation, it's the same. The correlation, it's the same. And the linear regression, or the line of best fit, you guessed it, it looks like this. The same. Ha! Huh. So this is no random collection of Smarties, I mean data. This is a famous example known as Anscombe's Quartet, proposed by the British statistician Frank Anscombe. He wanted to debunk a common misconception people had about data, which is that numerical calculations are somehow exact and data plotted on a graph is somehow rough. Summary metrics can be useful, but they don't always tell the full story. So what does this mean for your business reporting? Let's take a look at an example from a SaaS company. So here we can see how this business is tracking its net monthly recurring revenue change each month. So it's MRR change. Now the problem with MRR is that it's taking into account a lot of complicated revenue changes across hundreds if not thousands of accounts. And simplifying this data means that we can gloss over some pretty important trends. For example, in subscription businesses, Revenue change isn't just about customers subscribing and churning. It's about people upgrading to a higher tier, downgrading, and customers who are reactivating their old accounts too. All of this contributes towards your MRR. Using this dashboard, we get a much better impression of what's actually going on. And here, we can see that the recent uptick in MRR change is not driven by new customers, and it's not even really driven by a lack of customers churning. It's driven by existing customers upgrading the plan to a higher tier, sometimes referred to as expansion MRR. Let's take a look at another example, this time from a customer support team. Here, the team is tracking first response time, because the longer your customer is waiting to be connected to an agent, the worse their experience is going to be. But the problem with FRT is that it's an average. An FRT of 10 minutes could mean that every call is being answered in 10 minutes exactly, or it could mean that some of your customers are receiving responses in seconds and some are waiting a very long time indeed. I don't know about you, but if I was a CS manager, I would want to know if my FRT looked like this instead of this. One way to spot if this is happening is by tracking service level agreements or SLAs. This is where we visualize the number of customers receiving a response in less than the acceptable level. However, even this doesn't tell the full story. The best way to see what's going on with your FRT is to graph your data and break it down. 
I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe. Um, and if you're considering how to better visualize your own data, then please do check out Gecko Board. Gecko Board makes it easy to build live dashboards that let you know exactly what's going on with your data. Just head over to geckoboard.com, sign up for a free trial, and you'll be building dashboards in no time. Have a great day.